Quidditch players of the world. Today we are going to do 10 basic didgeridoo exercises for didgeridoo beginners. But if you can't do them and you're, you think you're on a lot of level, they're also for you. And before we start with the exercises, I want to list some uh, disclaimers. One of them being that the uh, idea of being a beginner or intermediate or advanced is just an idea. These things, they don't really exist in nature, you know, we're all just players. But this is a mind concept which sometimes helps and sometimes it doesn't. Um, that's one thing. Another thing is that um, maybe you will find some things here in, in this list which other people would call advanced. But I don't think they're advanced and I've had quite some experience with the judo players. Though sometimes I don't have a good feeling what is difficult and what is not at a certain level. I know what's difficult for me and I know what's not difficult for me. But they are, there were times that I was wrong. However, I still feel that all of the things that I uh, list here are reachable within maybe a few months of practicing, if you're practicing in the right way. Okay, so um, this might also open your mind about what you need to practice, because these exercises will map your body uh, in the right way for the judo playing. And another thing I would like to um, put a disclaimer about is that I've crammed a lot of things into this 10 exercises. So I want to list them because I want to have a place for reference so that I can say, if you can do this, this is great for you. Congrats. Um, and I've been thinking long and hard how to push this, um, what exercises to push into the list of 10. So it was like three minutes of thinking, which is more than I've ever done. So basically, um, some of the exercises um, will have more parameters and some will be deliberately restricted to less parameters, which you will see as we unfold them. Okay, ready? Let's go. So the first exercise is own your drone. This means that you have to be able to do two things. One is to start the drone every time you start playing so that your lips work. And the other means that you maintain the drone while you have air in the body. Okay, so you have to be conscious of these two parameters. And then you're owning your drone. And you can really practice them separately. So some people have problem with starting the drone, which means basically you have to start the drone. Often. Okay. And some people have problem with maintaining the drone, meaning that the lips won't listen to vibrate while they still actually have some air in the body, which could in theory produce the drone. So this means that you, um, um, use all of the drone you have in your lungs or almost all. And with, uh, as the, as the level of air drops in your body, you're still able to produce the drone. And so on. And I feel you really need to address both of these aspects. Um, to be able to claim that you own your drone. You have to see whether it's uh, something you need to practice or not. The second thing is clear drone in terms of harmonics. So maybe your first drone will be something like this. And what you need to do you need to make those lips vibrate efficiently. So you need to tighten, tighten them up and maybe restrict a little bit uh, the cavity in the mouth so that it's not all open and floppy, but a little bit tension will help to get from this place to this place. say go for one harmonic structure so um, don't do too much try to have a clear line okay so just one drone don't try to change it just try to play it for as long as possible um, with consistency okay 
because the next exercise, third exercise is harmonic changes. So in harmonic changes, you have to understand that harmonics are a function of um, the, the cavity of the mouth. Okay, so if the cavity is big, the harmonics will sound in one way. If the cavity is small, the harmonics will sound different, clearer, higher, and everything in between is possible. So everything you do inside your mouth will change how the harmonics are pronounced. The basic um, feeling you might get from changing from O to E, to E, O, E, or uh, O, E, O, E, But basically everything you do with your mouth uh, in, in, in terms of changing the form will affect the harmonic structure, okay? So we come to the fourth exercise and these are cheeks. If you can make the drone with the cheeks in or cheeks out, um, that is the question. So you should be able to do both. Um, and you focus just on puffing out your cheeks and um, bringing them back in and see what that does to the drone. But here it is actually more important that you uh, raise the awareness of how your cheeks are positioned while you play. So number five is that notorious circular breathing, which in uh, exercise five will be based or helped by the cheeks. You have to understand that circular breathing is always done by the tongue. So tongue is the main protagonist of circular breathing. However, it can be helped by something else. In this case, uh, cheeks. So um, I know that each of these exercises deserve their own video and maybe we can do that. You can try to motivate me in the comments, but for now, just let's stay with uh, this uh, summary and the basic feeling of things. So cheeks helped circular breathing would be this. So basically cheeks help uh, to store air. Exercise six will be jaw helped circular breathing. So your jaw will go down and up and this is how you will uh, help to push the air out from the mouth while you are breathing in. So that's exercise number six. You have to understand that all of this time I'm trying to um, sound like a beginner sort of, and that's actually a bit hard for me. So bear with me if I make mistakes along the way. Exercise number seven will be body helped um, circular breathing. So it will be body push, okay? So um, your corset muscle will contract and uh, muscles around the lungs will contract and the lungs will expel air that will uh, help um, stretch everything in the mouth a little bit and that air will keep going out while you breathe in. This is also called bounce breathing. And it sounds like this. Okay. This is also maybe the first step where you can hide your breathing a little bit. Exercise number eight will be toot with circular breathing. So we could say just toot, but I want you to own your toot in the same way that you own your drone. And actually toot with circular breathing isn't that hard. You have to understand that toot is a function of lip tension. Harmonics are a function of mouth cavity and toots are a function of uh, lip tension. So you have to stretch your lips, press your lips harder than for the drone and you will get the toot. <laughs> Okay, 
So if you want, um, uh, you can use any of the previously mentioned principles of circular breathing and you just circular breathe on the tooth. <laughs> Congrats for reaching this deep into the uh, list of uh, 10 basic exercises. If you would like to support the channel, uh, you can subscribe, hit notification buttons, likes and all of that. Um, if you would like to support us as a family making dishes, you can buy the Judo from us. This is Moitze, my famous C the Judo that I often play. And you can also think about coming to Masterclass if you can do all of these 10 basic exercises that pretty much qualifies you for visiting Masterclass. I will leave all the links in the description. Let's go to the checkpoint nine. So exercise nine is audible voice on drone. This means that while you're playing the drone, in other words, buzzing your lips, you have to buzz your vocal cords as well. It will help, of course, if you open your mouth and if you are comfortable with singing anyway. Um, but what you want to um, have as a result is being able to hear at the same time the drone and your singing on top of that. And it should be your chest voice um, for the beginning, but also your head voice is acceptable. Uh, second option. But you should start with having your chest voice audible because it's more basic and a bit harder to get it audible because head voice is so far apart uh, from the drone that it will always be audible or almost always. So start with the chest voice, okay? Usually we'll start with the same note that the didgeridoo is in. I made a whole video about singing when you're a total beginner and then some videos about a bit higher level singing on the didgeridoo. So make sure you check them out, especially if you have problem with this exercise here right now. And we've come to the 10th exercise, which is surprisingly one rhythm always available. So this one is different from the others as this one somehow also has uh, this cognitive component. All other exercises were based on body abilities, right? And this is a mind ability, so that your mind can think of a certain rhythmic pattern whenever. So somebody wakes you up in the middle of the night and you can play that. And this is up to you what this rhythmic pattern will be. But for example, on a, on a, in a, when you're a beginner, your uh, rhythm might sound like dowi dowi dow dowi dowi dow. Okay, on the digit it sounds like this. So it, it's based on harmonic changes. There are countless options of what you can do in this rhythmic patterns, but sometimes making one simple uh, twist can make a new rhythm. For example, playing Dawi, Tawi, Dao, where Tawi is the same Dawi but on tooth, okay? So I just mark it like this. The rhythm would sound um, very similarly, but it would be also different in a way and a bit more difficult to play. And as you progress, you should add more and more rhythms to your <laughs> rhythms always available library. So one example for me would be, for example, um, second, um, the chorus of the first part of Lake of Awareness. So 
if somebody wakes me up in the middle of the night and I'm like, or they shot me, in, shoot me in the leg and I'm going to hospital and somebody gives me this didgeridoo, or I have, I don't know, you know, totally changed uh, reality because I've been abducted by aliens and they've been doing stuff to me, I will still be able to play it because it's now played so many times that it's embedded in my DNA. And you should make your uh, rhythms always available, embedded in your DNA by conscious practice and then they go into your skin and meat and bones and then finally they, they, they reach your DNA. So this is what it is for me. I play this song on the same instrument like I play it here, so it's Moitze, my favorite universal, ultimate universal didgeridoo in C. You can check it out on our didgeridoo website. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this um, summary and if you will want to dive deeper into any of the topics or hear what my vision of continuation the next 10 exercises would be. Let me know in the comments. Until then, spiral out, keep digging. <laughs>